another example. In this example, they have the following scenario. Question says, find the volume of the solid. Lies above. Here we have a cone, z equals to square root of x squared plus y squared. And below, x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals to z. Okay, very good. We're trying to find the volume of a solid lies, be, lies above the cone and below the sphere here. So let's see what do we have? What are we dealing with? Graphing this guy is not that difficult, it's just the cone. So here we have our x-axis, here we have our y-axis and z-axis, and this is the graph of the cone. Okay, here we go. So this is my z equals to square root of x squared plus y squared. Just continues. Okay. The other guy is x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals to z. So let's simplify this so we see where the center is. We have x squared plus y squared plus z squared minus z equal to zero or x squared plus y squared plus z squared minus z. And here we're going to add a fourth. And this guy becomes x squared plus y squared plus z minus a half squared equals to a fourth. Okay. The center is zero, zero, a half, and the radius is a half as well. Okay, so for this guy, the center zero, zero, a half. So it's going to be, for example, here, and then radius a half. So your graph should look like this. Something like this. This is your sphere that you have. Now question says, okay, the volume that lies above the cone and below um, this sphere, which is going to be this part here. Okay, this seems like an ice cream, the volume of the ice cream inside the cone and above the cone. As you can see here, you have a sphere. So let us use a spherical coordinate system. We're going to use x, y, and z as we defined before. Our x is equal to rho sine phi. And cosine theta, y is a rho sine phi, sine theta, and our z is equal to rho cosine phi. Okay, then we're going to analyze what's happening to the theta, to phi, and to the rho. Well, so. We know that our phi is the angle between positive part of z-axis and stops here. This is my phi. Okay. 
you need to find phi. As you can see, there's an intersection between the sphere and the cone. It helps us to analyze phi. And if you look at the projection in x y plane, your theta is in between 0 to 2 points. So there is nothing that we can do about theta. Maybe it just ranges between 0 to 2 pi. Phi ranges between 0 to what? Let's try to find a phi. What's the behavior of a phi? OK, so here I have z equals to x squared plus y squared. And here I have x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals to z. What's the word that we have here? So I'm going to input all of these into the equation of the surface given to me. I have a row squared, sine squared phi, cosine squared of theta plus rho squared, sine squared phi, sine squared theta plus rho squared, cosine squared phi equals to rho cosine phi. So this is my focus here. Try to simplify this as much as I can. Between these two, what I can do, I can factor out rho squared sine squared phi and left with cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta, which is just one plus rho squared cosine squared phi equals to rho cosine phi. So I have rho squared sine squared phi plus rho squared cosine squared of phi equals to rho cosine phi. So rho squared sine squared phi plus cosine squared phi equals to rho cosine phi. This is just one. So what happens? Rho squared is equal to rho cosine phi or cosine phi is, let me see, equals to, can we simplify this more? Is equal to rho itself. I'm trying to see how can I use this to make some adjustments and find my phi. It only gives me cosine phi equals to rho. If I plug this guy in here, I get 2z squared equals 2, and that, that's going to help me a little bit. Now, take a look at this. I'm going to use z equals to x squared root of x squared plus y squared and substitute that guy right here. I get z squared plus z squared equals to z, or I'm going to have 2z squared minus z equal to 0. If I factor out z, I get 2z minus 1 equal to 0. So z is 0, and z equals to a half. Z is equal to a half. But what was the definition of z? Z is rho cosine phi. So rho cosine phi is equal to a half. Now, cosine phi is equal to rho. If you, so let me write this a little bit up here so you can see what happened. I have z squared plus z squared equals to z, or 2z squared equal to z, or um, 2z minus 1 times z equal to 0. So z is 0 and z is a half. At the same time, 
z is defined as a rho cosine phi. So rho cosine phi is equal to a half. At the same time, I know rho is equal to cosine phi. So I'm going to just substitute this here. Cosine squared of phi is a half. Cosine of phi is one over square root of two. So phi is pi over four. Very good. I found the boundary for phi, which is pi over four. Very good. So I'm going to erase this part of the board so I can set up the triple integral. So this is one of the methods that you can use to find the boundaries for your phi, now the triple integral itself. For the triple integral, the volume over region E is defined as the triple integral dV, which is equal to the triple integral of, well, here you have, remember dV is rho squared sine phi. Now d rho, d phi, d theta. This guy becomes the integral theta ranges between zero to two pi, and your phi is bounded between zero to pi over four. So pi starts from zero and stops at pi over four. And for your rho, Rho is bounded between, very good. Uh, we'll erase that. Rho is bounded between zero and cosine phi. And then you have rho squared sine phi d rho d phi d theta. Z is equal to square root of x squared plus y squared. Very good. So it means that what do we have? We have rho cosine phi equals to square root of. So if you simplify this guy as we did before, uh, do we have enough space to write it down here? We get rho squared sine squared phi cosine squared theta plus a rho squared sine squared phi sine squared theta and rho cosine phi becomes, so here you have your rho. If you factor out sine squared, it's going to be uh, one, so you get sine phi. So cosine phi is equal to sine phi. This is another method to find phi equals to pi over four. So if you need to apply another method, shorter method, you can apply this as well. Very good, so let's go back to the computation of triple integral that we have. This guy becomes, so um, zero to two pi, zero to pi over four, and here we have a rho, so we get a third cosine to the third of phi, and you have sine of phi, d phi d theta. Here you can use u sub. u is going to be cosine. d u is negative sine phi d phi. So here we get negative integral 0 to 2 pi, 0 to pi over 4. And here we have, um, so let's just change this. one over 12, so I'm just taking the integral, one over 12 cosine to the fourth of phi, and phi is bound to be zero to pi over four, and then we have the theta. So since this guy doesn't have anything to do with uh, 
theta 1 over 12, 2 pi, and here we have, if you plug in pi over 4, we get 1 over square root of 2 to the power 4 minus minus 1. So let's do the computation. Here we get negative pi over six. And here we have one over four minus one. So let's see, this guy becomes three pi over six times four or pi over eight. 